So we'll close out this section of, of this module on uh, electronic data capture tool consideration by talking about a few more modules or a few more concepts. One of the things that you might consider in choosing an electronic data capture platform is how you're able to get the data in, uh, maybe, maybe external data in. And there are a number of ways that, that that can be done. We've already talked about the data export components. But, but you know, one thing that, that might come to play with an electronic data capture system, and certainly something we've seen with the REDCap platform, is this need to sometimes do batch data uploads. Maybe I'm really not wanting someone to hand enter every lab measurement, but I do have from the lab a file that they can send me once a month, and I can easily format that in a certain way. And, and if I can format that in a certain way, it would be great if I could just upload that file, have REDCap or whatever electronic data capture system I'm using, if I could get that system to, to do the same data, data validation checks, the same logging, and all of the things that would happen as if I hand entered it. And so that's one use case for uh, data import tools. The other one we've seen with the REDCap data pl database platform is we have a lot of teams that maybe want to switch midstream, either in a study or maybe it's not a study but a registry, and they've been collecting data in a certain way uh, for some time. And they say, you know, this is just so much easier. We really want to flip on over to the REDCap system. Is that possible? It's kind of tricky because it depends on uh, you know, the quality of the data so far. A lot of times the reason they might want to convert is because they're not happy with the, the integrity of the system that they're coming from. And so you have to be really careful about uh, pushing data in that's dirty, that hasn't been validated, et cetera, into a pristine database. Uh, we found we could get both of those use cases, the batch data uploads, and also uh, the, the use case of converting another uh, system, sort of, sort of converting data from another system into REDCap by creating an import module. The import module knows your particular data set because, again, knows all of the data from your code book and the data dictionary that's embedded within the system. Therefore, it knows how to spit that back out at you in a template. So REDCap will spit out into a template the, uh, the format that you need if you're going to be pushing data in. So we don't care how you get it, just get it into this format. You click the Upload tool. It's then going to go through all of the validation checks, making sure that you're not putting a number into a field that's supposed to be a date or something of that nature that validates the integrity of the data. And if it does, it'll tell you. It'll tell you what to go fix, and you just go fix it. And at the end, when there, when there are no critical issues found, it will, it will sort of confirm, hey, you, are you really sure you want to do this? Because this is, uh, this is going to actually do the procedure. It's going to upload this data as if you had hand entered it. You say yes, and at that point, the logging takes effect. And, and you know, again, we, we still keep track of who did what to the data. You just have this logging uh, event that it, was, that it was an import operation. We found that to be very, very useful uh, for, for any number of use cases. So I would look for that anytime you're thinking about an electronic data capture tool set. Mentioned earlier in the, in the creation of a, of a study that sometimes we want to use uh, study calendaring. This is particularly uh, useful in human-based research uh, as well when you have, uh, you know, in human-based research where you have multiple arms, where you have uh, 42 visits coming up over the next three years. It just kind of gets hard to take care of that on, on a study-by-study a -by -study basis and, and know you know, what we're supposed to be doing next Tuesday as a study team, you know, in terms of scheduling and as far as uh, seeing patients and, and what's being done to those patients. And so it's useful, I think, in any electronic data capture system that you're using for clinical and translational research to be able to sort of embed and use a schedule, uh, schedule if, if, if you like. We, we found uh, in the data side of REDCap, that uh, many, many people um, look at maybe a first trip to the biostatistician after they're finished collecting data, or maybe even during uh, study data procedures if you've got active monitoring going on. We found that, that a lot of time is actually spent in cleaning the data. Now, we've talked earlier about this ability to have the system 
know that a certain field should be a date or a number and, and the ability to sort of check ranges and, and, and push back on the end user if they're violating those principles. But sometimes it's just uh, you, you have unavoidable things that kind of slip in because someone transposed a digit. So one of the things that we found very useful is to embed within REDCap this data visualization or cleaning tool that, that allows you to, uh, for any data element that you've collected, either categorical, which would show up as a bar type graph, or continuous as you, as you see here, be able to sort of show those out in some sort of a um, jitter plot, uh, as you see here, in univariate uh, fashion. And basically the way people use this is, is to find outliers. So if we found an outlier that, that looked really, really different than the rest, we'd be able to click on the button, or sorry, click on the point. It could take us directly to that data element within that person's case report form. And you'd be able to sort of check it and make sure that, that it was right. Um, again, there are a number of re reasons you want to put some sort of rudimentary data visualization into an electronic data capture system. But one of the ways that we found the most useful is in this data cleaning and just being able to sort of get a cursory view without having to export it and put it into statistics packages, et cetera. Custom reporting, so the ability not to have to export all of my data, really if I'm looking for just a subset. In this case, you see sort of one of the modules that in, in, in REDCap that would allow the end users to be able to sort of specify which fields they want. Uh, they, they choose in choose the fields there on the left. Uh, the fields have metadata behind the scenes, so, that, so or the data dictionary behind the scenes to tell this particular module what type of data element that is. And so if it's a number, then different choices come up on the right for how you might want to stratify or or, or filter your data. But being, having some sort of a system where you have some flexibility to allow the end users to customize reports without, again, having a programmer involved, that's a really important concept to think about with electronic data capture systems. Go, going a little bit further than that in the, in the data quality and reporting uh, mode, it's important to think about the quality of the data and uh, especially if we're dealing with multi-center functionality. So we'll talk uh, later on in this, in this course about special considerations when you're dealing with uh, data sets that might be generated by multiple teams, maybe coordinated by one group. But you know, maybe the Harvard uh, team or the Mayo team, we're all collaborating on this together, the Vanderbilt team. Uh, the UC Denver team, maybe we all are collaborating on this project to data. We're all pushing the data into a common electronic data capture system, even an instance of that data capture system, so that all of the data really are in one place. But it's quite important that in, the, in, in that particular case that you sequester the information and you sequester the data elements in the, in the records that, that the individual sites can see so that the Vanderbilt people cannot see the Mayo Clinic site data and vice versa. But somebody over the top of the study as a coordinator would be able to see all of it and generate queries. Again, we'll talk a little bit about this later in, in, uh, in, in later modules, but that ability to sort of look and see all of the, the data quality checks and issues that have arisen because you put the data in uh, either correctly or incorrectly, being able to sort of see that and even stratify it by site. This is something that you should think about with electronic data capture systems. And we found at Vanderbilt and, and elsewhere using REDCap that that's a functional module that, uh, that, that, that is very important. Uh, one of the things that uh, you may or may not need to consider with an electronic data capture system would be the ability to abstract uh, language for uh, at least the case report form and survey uh, Im implementation. So where this is going to really come into play is if you're doing uh, uh, multi-country studies or global health studies, but, but occasionally as well, you know, it may come into play if you're doing uh, studies right there locally where you have different communities that, that you're uh, leveraging for your research studies that might be speaking foreign languages or different languages, rather. So, so in our case, we, um, we, we've, we've spent a lot of time trying to make sure that we can uh, fulfill the needs to be able to sort of render surveys or, or case report forms out in different languages, including the, the categorical options, et cetera. And because we've, um, 
we've really disseminated the REDCap platform out widely to, to lots and lots of uh, partner institutions, we actually went ahead and abstracted the language for the entire base code so, so that uh, you know, an individual in China uh, is, isn't reading uh, core level instructions in English, they're reading it in, in Chinese. So again, I think that, uh, that maybe that last piece is, is a little bit dependent on whether you're doing uh, lots and lots of studies in, in, a, in a decentralized way where you've got uh, people speaking different languages. But, but for sure, the first set of functionality, um, the, the ability to render out surveys and, and case report forms in multiple languages is something you might consider when planning for a, an EDC system. So, so um, another way that we can think about getting uh, data in and out of a system, uh, and, and this is a very important concept, uh, one of the things that you want to think about with electronic data capture systems, or really any informatics platform in my opinion, is this uh, concept that the data should never be held hostage. Uh, I, I call it open architecture. So, so in REDCap, we've already seen that we can import data if we can get data from a file uh, into a file that REDCap recognizes. You can import it and it will do all of the right things in terms of checking validity and logging, et cetera. We saw uh, earlier in this uh, segment that we can also export data into any of the common statistics packages. But if you really want to do some of the uh, really strong integration work, th there's another way that you can access the data that, that's in REDCap. And that's through an, uh, uh, a component called the API. It's, it's uh, a programmer interface where, uh, and methodology where if you're programming in another uh, environment, maybe it's a web page, maybe it's just from a statistics package, there is a methodology so that you can talk to REDCap in a secure fashion uh, and, and ask it for data and also push data into REDCap you can also ask it for metadata, et cetera. So, you know, you don't have to be a hardcore programmer, but if you do have some really clever uh, integration type work, uh, it's important that, that uh, we feel that, that the system should not be limited to uh, sort of the, the, the single user interface, but instead have sort of external system uh, functionality. And again, that's uh, the, the API technology that is, uh, that is something that's built into a lot of systems these days. And, and I would definitely recommend that as you're thinking about an electronic data capture system that, that you look at that particular component because it really can open the doors for integrating lots and lots of data sources uh, together. So um, kind of concluding, you, you know, in the REDCap domain, uh, and again, sort of taking lessons from that domain and, and EDC and sort of generalizing those to any EDC platform, you know, we found it tremendously valuable to just sort of provide an easy way to do the right thing and the right thing being, uh, you know, highly compliant, highly secure, uh, but, but also make it really, really easy uh, and, and put the power in the hands of research teams. Uh, the power within the ED system uh, can, can be very great. You know, we just talked about the API. We've talked earlier about uh, data de-identification and all of the audit trails and maybe double data entry. Those, those are all randomization of, of patients. Those are all very, very critical elements that, that can be employed in, in this particular EDC system if your study requires it. But we spend a lot of time trying to, to take that complexity out of the way for studies that, that really don't need it. And so keeping, it, uh, keeping in mind that we're always designing for the humans, the, the research coordinator and the, and the uh, data entry people and the statistician, we found that that's a really, um, re really important concept when designing and developing an ADC system. And I think our end users really appreciate that philosophy as well. So that concludes the segment, and I hope it's given uh, at least some overview of important functions and features for EDC programs, and, uh, and, and also provided the fundamental details about REDCap that we'll be using later on in different sections and modules.